Hello, my name is Vineeth G. Mohan. And my name is Neelima Mohan. I'm going to ask you a question. Where does natural rubber come from? Um, well, I never thought where it came from before. That's easy. Uh, rubber? Rubber. Rubber. Latex rubber. Um, like gloves? Yes. The one that we use every day, like in erasers? Mm -hmm. Oh, like in, like in car tires? Yes. Or rubber bands? That's why they're called rubber bands. Mm, yeah. The only kind of rubber is made from chemicals, right? <laughs> Wood from trees? Isn't it from animal skins or something? Rubber bushes. Um, this is just a wild guess. The sap from a rubber tree? Wow, it's about time somebody got that right. It's a shame that almost nobody knows that rubber comes from trees. Especially since they themselves say they use it every day. They even named off examples like gloves, erasers, car tires, and rubber bands. But what in fact are latex and rubber? And how are they produced from milky latex into usable rubber? To answer that question, we packed up our bags and our cameras and went all the way to Tiruvannathapuram, India, the capital city of the southernmost state, Kerala. But before we could reach there, we made a quick stop at Singapore. While waiting for our next flight to India, I was thinking about the history of rubber. This statue reminded me of the Central American civilization, the Olmecs, who were famous for building colossal statues. They were known as the Rubber People because of the religious ball game which used a rubber ball. But it was way different than today's basketball or baseball. If you lost the game, you'd be killed and your body would be sacrificed to the gods. But what's the significance of this ancient ball game? It's the first ever recorded use of rubber in human history. But when did rubber become industrialized like how it is today? I just looked out into the street in front of me. Cars. With the invention of the automobiles in the late 1800s, the rubber boom began. With that, our wait was over and we were off to India. But oh no, we didn't go to the main metropolitan area to find rubber trees. We went to the far suburbs of the city, in a village known as Nenamangad, to find out the secrets about how rubber is produced. <laughs> with the life of a rubber tree. This rubber tree is about a year old. This tree is about two and a half years old, but we'll have to wait until it's eight years old before we start tapping and extracting the latex. These trees are about eight years old, and they are ready to start the process. Let's take a closer look at what the tapping process is all about. Once the bark is cut off by a knife, the latex will pour into a container where it's collected. The tapper cuts in a spiral down toward the right, as the veins of the rubber tree spiral in the opposite direction to cut through the maximum possible amount of veins. We have to be careful though to not cut through the bark to the wood, as this will permanently damage the veins and make later tapping difficult. Here the tapper is stripping the dried latex from an earlier harvest, replenishing the flow of latex. <laughs> the milk has been collected, one liter of latex is mixed with two liters of water and two milliliters of formic acid and it is left to settle for one day. Formic acid is used to help process the liquid latex into solid rubber. After a day, the latex sheets are put through three compression processes. The first is a simple compression by feet to remove excess water. The second is through the smooth cylinder and lastly through this ribbed cylinder. Finally, the latex has been transformed into 100% pure rubber sheets like these. It will be sold to the market, where it will be manufactured into specific items that arrive in stores for consumers to purchase. Wow! Who would have known that there is that much work to be put in just to create a simple sheet of rubber? It's something we should all appreciate. We use it every day, as our interviewee stated, in gloves, erasers, tires, and rubber bands. What about synthetic rubber? That's a good question. However, the production of synthetic rubber requires the use of petroleum. And during this climactic crisis where everybody wants ecologically friendly products, natural rubber is the only clean solution. The only machine we used was a simple cylinder roller. Hey, we should give the people who got the answer wrong a little surprise. What do you mean? Oh. Oh. I'm safe, right? Well, that's the process of rubber tapping. The next time you see a rubber band lying around, just think about the hard work that went into making that rubber band. <laughs> <laughs>